Hello, and welcome to our build guide featuring the unusual correlations between brands and saboteur ascendancy. The trigger bots granted by saboteur's ascendancy node double the output of every trigger effect with a little bit of damage penalty. It works particularly well with the Arcanist brand and brand recall. The Arcanist brand is fairly intuitive, as it is a type of brand that triggers any spell linked to it. The brand recall causes all your brands to teleport to your location and force them to activate once, despite not being attached to any target. By socketing the brand recall gem in a wand that triggers spells when you use a skill, you will double the recall with your trigger bots, resulting in a total of 4 activations of the Arcanist brand per cooldown. You can have up to 7 active Arcanist brands, which leads to 28 instances of a spell being fired each time the brand recall is being used. Two of your brands will also attach to the enemy and cast out spells like usual, providing consistent damage output. With this setup, you can use any spell in the game to deal damage, but the Blazing Salvo seems to work the best in terms of both single target and clear speed. Activating all your Arcanist brand consumes a large amount of mana, but you can trivialize the mana cost with the Eldritch Battery Keystone and Energy Shield on the hit modifier. The Blazing Salvo is a fire spell that releases a high number of projectiles, dealing damage in a small area that can overlap against single enemies. You can also use the Nimi's Ring or Returning Projectiles support to make them return to you and deal the damage again. It is a quite tanky caster build with many defensive layers. You will blind all nearby enemies, which additionally reduces their damage against you. The Determination and Grace Aura grants you plenty of armor and evasion rating, and you can easily cap your spell suppression chance. You will release an overwhelming amount of fiery projectiles in every direction, obliterating everything you come across. All those projectiles can also overlap against bosses, making them extremely deadly in every scenario, as long as you can come close to the enemy. To have a functional build you only need a specific Watcher's Eye and Trigger Wands. All other expensive items are used to boost your damage but are unnecessary for regular tier 16 mapping. The only unique item you truly need is the Watcher's Eye with Energy Shield modifier. The remaining items on this list are optional, but they are surely a powerful addition to the build, hence their price tag is quite high. You can completely solve your mana sustain by using the energy shield of hit modifier on this unique jewel. Other than that, look for useful defensive and offensive modifiers for all your remaining auras. You can also fit in the vitality aura just to benefit from the powerful life recovery modifiers available here. You can use this helmet to greatly reduce the mana reservation of your four auras. The feast of flesh is also a quite useful form of recovery during mapping. It is easy to pick up but provides fewer defensive values than a proper rare helmet since you have easy access to Eldritch Battery Keystone anyway. It is an easy way to gain 4 levels for your main gem and boost the damage by the extraordinary quality of your support gems. However, this armor provides no defensive value. The bonus quality can be used together with the Divergent Inspiration support to greatly reduce mana costs. The skin of the Lord's body armor also provides 4 additional gem levels for your main setup while using the empower support, but it also has a defensive value in the form of the increased global defense, which applies to your armor, evasion, and energy shield. The Nimis is undoubtedly the best unique ring for most projectile skills that can make use of the projectile return. It will greatly improve your damage, as the returning projectiles are refocused directly on your position. As a replacement, you can simply use the returning projectile support gem, but it won't be as effective. It is a great source of cooldown recovery rate for your brand recall through the bonus quality, and the mana reservation efficiency makes it much easier to fit in the additional herald. It is a great addition to the build, but not having this item does not break it. This amulet grants even more levels for the blazing salvo but lacks the quality for the brand recall and provides a bit less reservation efficiency for your auras. It is, however, a much cheaper option, and the reduced attribute requirements are quite useful. You can use this jewel to gain access to the Inner Conviction Keystone which greatly improves your damage based on the amount of power charges you have. It can also reduce your mana costs a bit, but it is not very impactful alone. 
You should always use rare weapons with the trigger modifier, it is the core of this build. To boost your damage look for increased spell damage, critical strikes, or cooldown recovery rate. The cast speed doesn't improve your damage that much, but makes the gameplay much smoother. Defensively, you should try to get a lot of spell suppression chance, which will force you to use evasion-based gear. Use two wands with two different trigger mods to desynchronize your brand recall cooldowns, one unveiled from Jun directly, and the other 8 seconds one crafted on the crafting bench. The wands should also provide you with spell damage, bonus gem levels, extra critical strikes for spells, or cast speed. A rare helmet can provide you with plenty of useful modifiers, starting with spell suppression chance and mana reservation efficiency. It should also include maximum life, resistance, and physical damage taken as elemental or attributes. It is also easier to get a base with the enchant for the blazing salvo. You can use a defensive focused armor that grants plenty of spell suppression chance, mana reservation efficiency, and eldritch implicits on top of that. You should also craft the physical damage taken as elemental here. You can skip the life modifiers to benefit from the life mastery that grants you 15% maximum life, which also greatly reduces the costs of such armor. On your boots you should focus on defensive modifiers such as maximum life, resistances, and ailment avoidances. The chance to gain onslaught on kill is a quite reliable way to obtain this useful buff during mapping. You should also get the cooldown recovery rate via the Eldritch Implicit. Your gloves should also be focused mostly on defense, but you can get a bit of damage there via specific Eldritch Implicits. The Fire Life Leech you can find there is especially useful to have. You can quite easily craft such gloves using a base with a Fractured Spell Suppression modifier and a bunch of essences. Your belt is another piece of equipment that can improve your cooldown recovery rate. It should also grant you tons of maximum life, resistances, or attributes. You can also use various flask modifiers to improve your flask sustain. If you use the Stygian Vice for your belt you can use an additional Abyss Jewel that grants maximum life, lacking resistances or attributes, and boosts your damage via Critical Strike Multiplier or Cast Speed. You can also corrupt it to get immunity against corrupted blood. At first you can simply use a rare amulet with bonuses to fire gem levels, maximum life, resistances, and cast speed or critical strike multiplier. Without mana reservation efficiency on your amulet, we suggest using petrified blood instead of determination, which also enables the pain attunement keystone for extra damage. There are tons of good modifiers you can look for on your ring. Try to get maximum life, increased fire damage, critical strike multiplier, cast speed, or minimum frenzy charges. You can also get lacking attributes and resistances, including chaos resistance. On your rare jewel you should look for bonuses to maximum life and critical strike multiplier. It should provide lacking resistances and attributes if you still need them. You can also grant you a bit of mana reservation efficiency if you can't use your auras otherwise. The Bottled Faith is still the best unique flask to use for a critical strike based build. The consecrated ground it creates makes enemies much more vulnerable to your critical strikes and grants you a bit of life regeneration. The Dying Sun can greatly improve your single target damage by directly increasing the amount of projectiles and their ability to overlap. The uptime on this flask is quite bad, so you might prefer using a regular defensive flask instead. For your remaining magic flasks we recommend using a life flask with bleeding removal bonus, quartz flask with cast speed bonus, quicksilver flask with critical strike bonus, and a jade flask with evasion rating bonus. You can also use the crafted reduced mana cost modifier on one of your flasks, but without the 100% uptime, it is an unreliable method. The Arcanist brand is a special brand skill that activates link spells. The important caveat here is that those spells are triggered, so they can be doubled by trigger bots. The Blazing Salvo releases a massive amount of fire projectiles in a specific direction. By concentrating them in one place you can deal tons of damage against a single enemy. The Elemental Focus grants a lot of damage, but disables your ability to inflict Ignite, 
which in this build is very weak anyway. The Inspiration can be used to reduce mana costs, but it grants less damage than other options. The Brand Recall teleports all your brands to you and forces them to trigger one time, even without being attached to any enemy. Since it is being triggered by your weapon, it will get doubled by trigger bots. In the trigger wand you should also socket other utility spells, as the cooldown is applied individually to each skill. The sniper's mark increases the damage enemies take from your projectiles, and causes them to split upon impact, causing even more overlaps. The enhanced support increases the quality of Link's skills. The anomalous quality of brand recall increases its cooldown recovery rate, while the sniper's mark increases your damage a bit. Usually, all brand recall skills share cooldown, so you can't use them more than once, but if you desynchronize their cooldown with different timers you can trigger them independently of each other. It is a stationary orb that continuously strikes nearby enemies. It doesn't deal much damage, but it's used to sustain power charges against bosses. You will need to link the orb of storms to the power charge on critical to generate said power charges. Having the Orb of Storms in a wand with shorter cooldown will improve your charge sustain, but you will mark enemies less often during mapping. Grace is a defensive aura that grants and improves your evasion rating. You can also use the Watcher's Eye Jewel to gain a bit of spell suppression while using this aura. Zealotry improves your spell damage and critical strike chance for spells. You will also sometimes create a consecrated ground effect under enemies you hit. Determination is your second defensive aura, it works very similarly to Grace but grants armor rating instead. Since you want to use evasion-based gear, you may consider the Petrified Blood Aura instead, as the armor won't be that high anyway. You will need the Enlightened Support linked with those gems and a good helmet to be able to use all recommended auras. Anger is another powerful offensive aura. It grants a lot of additional fire damage for your spells. The Divine Blessing allows you to use this usually permanent aura to be cast as a short-timed buff. You can use the Inspiration support to reduce the initial mana cost, but it is not necessary if your energy shield is high enough. Discipline grants you lots of energy shield, and greatly improves its recharge rate. Usually, it is not needed in an Eldritch battery build, but here it is used to enable the Watcher's Eye modifier to gain energy shield on hit. Herald of Ash greatly improves your fire spell damage and burns nearby enemies for some amount of the overkill damage. It has a great value for the amount of mana it reserves, but it's first to be removed if you don't have enough reservation efficiency on your gear. Flame Dash is the best movement skill to use for this build, it teleports you in a short distance and leaves a burning path on its way. You will stack a lot of cooldown recovery rate, so you can use this skill more often than usual. Steel Skin is a very useful guard skill. It absorbs part of the incoming damage and disables bleedings on you. Frost Shield creates an icy globe that reduces the damage you take while standing inside of it. It also chills enemies and increases your critical strike chance. It is best to kill all bandits in the second act to get two bonus passive tree skill points. You can also help Alira to get a bit of damage and resistances, while also improving your mana sustain during leveling. You can change your choice once you get better gear later on. As for the major pantheon god power you can use the soul of Era Kali to reduce the damage from over time effects, which are usually not reduced by your spell suppression or armor. The minor pantheon power can also be used to further reduce the damage coming from over time ailments. The soul of Ralakesh is great against bleedings, while the soul of Shikari helps with poisons. The campaign is very easy, you can use the brand spells to level up with. You can start with the regular Storm and Armageddon brand and swap to the Arcanist brand later on, as you gather more resources to sustain the high mana costs. The passive tree provides many important features. The brand notables and masteries are very important for your damage and cooldowns. Power charges greatly amplify your damage and critical strike chance, and the Disciple of the Forbidden together with Charge Mastery will easily sustain your charges during regular mapping. The cooldown on the trigger modifier on the wands is quite long, but it inherits all cooldown recovery rate modifiers from Brand Recall, which allows you to use it almost every second.
Your two regular Arcanist brands attached to the enemy are not limited by cooldown, so the gameplay is very smooth even at a low budget. The blind-focused notable of the Saboteur is very strong, but the other two notables offered by this Ascendancy are not that great. At later stages of progression, you can change your Ascendancy choice to Trickster or Assassin, and borrow the perfect crime notable from the Saboteur Ascendancy using the Forbidden Flesh and Flame Jewels. However, it is something you should look into only once you have a solid end game setup already. That's everything you need to know to start your own adventure with this unusual setup. If you want to see more of our guides, please leave a like, subscribe, or comment on the video. Have a good day, and see you next time.